Now to the kidnapping of J.C. Dugart. This isn't the first time Philip Garrido has faced this type of charge. Fifteen years ago, he was convicted of kidnapping and rape and was sentenced to 50 years behind bars. Early show national correspondent Hattie Kaufman is in Antioch, California, with more now on how Garrido slipped through the cracks. Hattie, good morning. Good, good morning, Harry. Philip Carrito would be in prison right now and through the year 2027 if he had served that full sentence for kidnapping and raping a woman back in 1977. But he was paroled after just 11 years and now sits in jail for allegedly kidnapping J.C. Dugard, fathering two children with her and keeping them all captive here. Karen Walker and her four children live just a few doors down from Garrido. You know, it's just disturbing that all the kids in the neighborhood playing over here and he you know on numerous occasions i've seen him driving by the house garrido allegedly snatched jc dugard off the street and kept her captive for 18 years be careful i'm glad that he was caught when he was but it should have happened sooner walker shares a growing concern that the convicted rapist was released early free to roam her neighborhood they changed the law in 1987 and mr garrido from the federal system would certainly have never gotten out defense attorney peter coleridge says investigators assigned to regular home visits all missed opportunities to discover garrido's hidden compound if you were a parole officer and you're visiting this parolee and he's got this gigantic fence behind wouldn't you be curious one would hope they would be curious both facing multiple charges, including kidnapping for sexual purposes and forcible rape. Nancy Garrido once worked here at this children's center, ironically part of a child abuse prevention program. In 1993, Nancy Garrido may have been alone with JC and the girls for five months, while her husband returned to jail for a parole violation. Karen Walker found her encounters with Mrs. Garrido disturbing. Erratic movements from I'm suspecting drug use, poor hygiene. The little girl was really pale, not being out in the sun. Danielle LeBleu was an acquaintance of Mr. Garrido and says her son warned her, saying, Mom, there's something kind of strange about him. I said, no, baby. It's just that, you know, he has different beliefs than all of us. And my son says, no, Mom, there's something strange about him. Because there are several unsolved murders in the surrounding area, police combed through this compound where J.C. and her daughters were held captive. Though they found a bone fragment and several other items that require forensic testing, they found nothing that definitively at this time ties the Garritos to any of those unsolved crimes. Harry? Hattie Kaufman in Antioch, California. Thanks. Joining us now from El Dorado Hills, California, is Gilbert Maines, the court-appointed attorney for Philip Garrido's wife, Nancy. Mr. Maines, good morning. Good morning, Harry. How are you? I'm well. How would you describe your client's state of mind? When I talked to her, I would say that she was distraught, frightened, appeared to be a little lost. Um, I would think I would describe her like a ship without a rudder. She was. Uh, she's concerned. Mm. Has she been able to talk to you about her relationship with with the girls, with JC's daughters? Um, I, I would preface this by saying that, uh, you know, I've been in this case now for five, five days. Mm -hmm. I've seen no evidence whatsoever. And I've had an hour and a half or so with my client in an attorney-client interview room talking through the glass. So it's wow. not really conducive to uh, uh, opening up a, a, a dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, what, having said that, um, she has said to me that, that she misses the girls, that um, she loves them, and uh, they, in her her feeling was that they had become a family. Wow. It seems a little strange, but that was it. Mm. Is she cooperating with the police or the prosecutors? Um, we haven't been asked to cooperate with anyone. Mm. Interesting. Um, would you describe her right now, just from these five days and the hour and a half that you spent with her, as an accomplice or as a victim? Well, you're asking me to formulate a, a defense strategy after five days with and with no evidence, uh, mm -hmm. and I can't do that. If I'm asked to uh, pick one of the two, I would say victim. Did she has she talked at all about why she was with this man, how they met, what the nature of their relationship? 
Well, she confirmed to me that they had met when he was in prison, serving in uh, his prison term. Um, they got married while he was still in prison. Um, they were married for some period of time while he was still in prison. Um, this is her first and only marriage. Um, we haven't delved into it much beyond that. What's the most important thing, at least you can share with us publicly, that you need to know from her? I don't think there's anything that I need to know from her right at this moment. What I need to have with her is an open line of communication so that I can uncover and delve into what her history has been and how she got to where she is. And uh, that's going to take some professional help for me. Mm. Professional help, you mean a, a psychologist, a, a psychiatrist, do you think? Take your pick, yeah. Okay, all right. Gilbert Mains, we thank you so much for...